Hi guys, I hope you are doing well. Um, today we're gonna talk about chapter six, which is gonna be about stress. Um, before starting that, I just wanted to talk to you for a minute. Um, I got like maybe two or three emails about um, uh, quizzes. Um, I know like some students are just struggling a lot answering quizzes, um, but even in the beginning, I mentioned that there are always going to be at least two conceptual questions, which are going to be more challenging uh, to answer for you. Sometimes you can just address them like so fast, but sometimes um, some people, they do have problems and that is fine because like that's the aim of quizzes because I want to challenge you. And that's why you do have um, two attempts and no time limitation. And you don't have any exams because like, honestly, the least I would care, it just uh, evaluate you based on exams or I don't know, based on like some harsh uh, policies. Um, the important point for me is um, to make sure you understand the material in a good way that you could just apply in a real situation. I'm going to give you an example. Um, I'm actually uh, recruiting like RAs, research assistants, almost every semester, at least like two. Um, and every time a student just come to me or just um, trying to just, you know, for the first interview, they would just complain that they didn't learn anything from college or they didn't learn any practical knowledge from their courses. And that's why they are just applying for my labs, just work with me because they, they want to get some research experience or at least some knowledge that they could just apply um, for their job in the future. I just wanted to say that this is not about your professor. This is not about your teacher. Uh, if you feel like you don't learn anything from college, it's, it is about you. You really should just actually think outside of the box. You, you should just consider yourself something like more than taking quizzes or getting 100 A plus all the time. You should just ask yourself every time uh, whenever you are taking a course, if you are actually addressing the outlines of each chapter, if you can just literally understand what is the chapter about more than just getting A plus or 100. It's not about that. Sometimes you are getting a 75, but you actually learned all the materials in a good way. And I can see that in, for example, your discussion posts or in your final project. And I'm going to help you by the end of the semester. So all I'm trying to say is um, don't worry about your grade at this point. I mean, your your quiz grade. I'm, I'm just saying that. Don't worry about that, but do your best to enhance your grade, first of all. Second of all, listen to lectures because uh, like I always just give you some cues about the about the questions or about like some important points or I would just some footnotes or captions in the video for you to just you know give you a hint um try to just watch lectures once or twice um you can just do fast forwarding you you are not necessarily required to just watch in a normal speed you can just do 1.5 1.25, but at least less than them. Whenever you are just walking or whenever you are just going to work or just doing chores, you can just play them and just listen to me. And if I'm just emphasizing on one point, you can just understand that, oh, she actually said that, so probably there's gonna be a question. Or she actually said that, so probably it's gonna be very important for my future because I mean, she knows some stuff, right? Um, so always listen to lecture, take notes and understand what part is more important. Then go back to the chapter because whatever I'm going to say in my lecture, it's going to be very relevant to your book, but your book does not cover everything that is important. And that is important for your internship, for your future job or for your life. Um, so again, while you are just reading the book and while you are just taking the quizzes, make sure you're going to check the lecture as well. Also, while you are just checking the lecture, make sure you're going to check the textbook as well. Cause like 50% of the questions, definitely they're going to be from your lecture, but the rest of them going to be from your book. Definitely. Um, and if I'm challenging you now in like two or three years, when you got a job as whatever you like, school psychologist, health psychologist, 
or whenever you do have like some stressful situation in your life or your sibling they do have your partner they do have you want to say a big thank you to me seriously because even now i'm getting so many emails from my previous students they are just literally saying that oh for example the final project you asked us like two years ago it was perfect now i'm just doing the same with my kids with my uh, nephew so all, you see what i'm saying like they learned something that they could just remember after like two years or three years so i would suggest everyone take health psychology seriously don't um try to just take the quizzes just google the answers majority of the time you cannot find the answers especially nowadays for more serious chapters like chapter six you cannot find the answers uh in google or i don't know some platforms like quizlet or something like that because i'm checking my questions in uh, quizlet so yeah don't waste your time you do have unlimited period to take your quizzes so use that wisely that being said let's talk about chapter six which i love chapter six honestly it is one of the best because it is about the stress and anxiety and the problem we all have uh, we cannot deny that uh, so we're going to talk a lot about the stress this week um the outline here the first one is what is a stress second second one is origins of the study of a stress like literally we're going to talk about origins of a stress the physiology of a stress what makes events stressful how um, a stress been studied so far and sources of chronic stress so the first question here what is a stress i'm going to give you a minute to just read these examples i want to talk about this more And I love my cup. I guess I already told you, but I love that. Um, so a stressful situation is going to be, for example, missing a boss. Or you have to take an exam, but you didn't have time. You were just partying or, I don't know, you were just sad or something. So now you're just stressed out. That's why I hate exams. I feel like exams, they are not fair. Or, for example, wondering if your parents get divorced or not. Or even like thinking about what you should eat for lunch they all gonna be a stressful situation but a stressful situation is gonna be different from one person to another for me my lunch is gonna be very important for you maybe like missing a boss so it's just different from a person to another uh stressors um what are they so events that gonna cause a stress they're gonna be stressors um they are just very important they're gonna be like five top five Oh, top five stressors uh number one gonna be work yes money number two then comes um work money oh family responsibilities um family health and there was another one economy yes so these top five they are just important for everyone i mean every normal person out there but i mean some people they don't care about their work some people they don't care about their family so they are like exceptional in not a good way but for majority of people these five stressors they are the most important one um there might be some other situation uh for example for another person just hearing some noises it's gonna give them anxiety okay for example, someone um, in the middle of the night, if they would just hear something outside, they would just get severe panic attack and all that. That's important too, but they are not top five stressors. Okay, top five going to be the ones that I already mentioned. Uh, appraisal of stressors. Um, so we do have like two uh, primary and secondary appraisal of stressors. Primary ones, they are like direct causes of stress. For example, just understanding what an event is and what it will mean. Okay, I'm gonna give you an example. For example, whenever you are just losing your job, you're gonna get um, severe stress, which is gonna be primary one. That's gonna cause you like secondary appraisal. This is not direct, which means like, let's say, whenever you are losing your job, you're gonna have a toxic relationship with people around you you're gonna fight with your partner more you're gonna uh, just be grumpy all day so you might not be very polite to your family 
um, you're going to get like low self-esteem because you feel like it was your problem that you got fired or got laid off or something like that. Um, so it's going to be secondary, like the consequences, like the indirect um, consequences, they're going to be uh, secondary appraisal, if that makes sense. But primary one going to be, for example, getting cancer, losing job, financial issues, or like something like that going to be primary one. Another example here, again, um, I guess you remember her. She was uh, Randall's wife. I forgot her name. I guess it was Beth. But yeah, she lost her job. Um, so unemployment going to be direct or primary one, primary appraisal. Secondary one going to be bad relationship with your partner, low self-esteem, increased anxiety. They're, they're all going to be secondary one. Okay. Whenever we have a stress, there are going to be two mechanisms. Number one going to be fight. Number two going to be flight response. I guess you remember that we had this in the previous chapter. We already talked about that. Um, so basically, you're going to either, whenever you do have like a stressful situation, um, you're going to either attack to the stressful event or you're going to run from a stressful event. Um, the whole idea of fight or flight coming from Walter Cannon, 1932, um, and it is very important part because like um, the way like Cannon described fight or flight, it is just saying that the body going to just arouse and motivated by two systems. Again, we already talked about that. It's going to be endocrine system or uh, sympathetic nervous system. They're going to decide what should we do. Either we're going to fight with the stressful or either we're going to just fly, run from the situation. So this way, we're going to actually um, kind of just, uh, what is that, deal with the stressful situation. The advantage of that going to be, it is like a very adaptive situation. The disadvantage of that going to be, it's going to disrupt your, emo your emotional and physiological functioning. What do I mean? If you would not address your stress constantly, you're going to adapt to the situation and it's going to bring you health problem. Okay. For example, if you have like a stressful situation in your life and you would just ignore that all the way over time, you're going to adapt to that anxiety, which is going to disrupt your whole organism, your organs, your body and all that. Um, another example, just imagine and college and undergraduate student, a college student dealing with a bad relationship, severe financial problems, loans, I don't know, rents, all that. We all familiar with that course load working outside of the school. And like I said, abusive, I don't know, boyfriend or girlfriend. Um, so that person just constantly stressed, like from every possible aspect. Just imagine financial partner life, school, all that. They are stressed, they are working a lot, they are not addressing those stressful events and they are not actually seeking help or learning some coping techniques. So over time, they're gonna get panic attacks, they're gonna get severe anxiety, depression, social isolation, it is, it is crazy. Whatever situation you are, try to talk to someone. Don't hold it to yourself because it's going to like disrupt you in a very bad way. Seriously, just being like even talking to a therapist is important. I know it's just finding a therapist can be kind of expensive. But as far as I know, your school, Georgia said they're going to offer you free counseling at some point. I know maybe the counselor over there, they might not be perfect. But they can help you. And like the idea of talking to someone can help you a lot. Go for that. Don't be isolated in, in any case. I'm just urge you uh, to just go for help if you are in a very bad situation mentally. And depressive symptoms and so on. They're going to be like so many more problems. So it is very important to just address our stress. Why? Because based on a scientist, Juan Celier's, um, there is a model general adaptation syndrome. They're going to call it GAS or gas. Um, it is very important and it is just very simple as well. Here you can see a stress response. Here you can see time. First of all, if we would have like a stressful situation, they're going to be alarm phase. We're going to be alarmed about that stressful situation. Then after that, we're going to actually build up 
resilience towards that stressful situation, which is good, which is good. The point is, if we would be alarmed all the time, you can see the response going to be in a very bad way. It's going to get negative. Then over time, yes, at first we're going to be resistant. But after that, like in, in the last phase, they're going to be exhaustion because like you were just exposed to that alarm situation, stressful situation all the way. And you are just trying to fight with that or run from that all the time. And you know, you cannot tolerate that because your body cannot just pull all those pressure and all that. Before go going to the last phase, exhaustion, you have to address all your problems in resistance phase. So if you do have a patient, they do have severe anxiety and someone is asking you how to address that severe anxiety or stress based on Celia's mother, model or gas, you're going to just focus on resistance phase, right? You're going to just try your best to either address the alarm situation or give them a coping technique for resistance phase. You shouldn't let them to go to exhaustion. Okay, keep that in your mind. That's very important. Um, there are like so many criticism when it comes to GAS or gas. Um, they say that they are not paying enough attention to psychological factors. Uh, for example, they are just only caring about their phases and they are not, for example, caring about psychological factors, for example, the, the other psychological problems, like maybe the person is already uh, dealing with some mental disorders or something like that. Um, another point is not all stressors, they, they're going to just produce the same biological responses, which is correct. Um, Oh, and uh, the last one is it just actually failing to address some sort of um, bad effects of a stress. It's just focusing on uh, resistance phase, which might not be the best way. But in general, GAS, I mean, besides from that, those criticisms, um, GAS is a good model and it can address some I would say easier problems here and there, because like the main focus here is just resistance and alarm, and we have to just prevent from the patient from exhaustion. I guess like it's just simple and understandable for everyone. Um, okay, so far we talked about a stressful situation, and whenever we do have a stressful situation, we're gonna do either fight or flight, but. Is it like the only way? No, there's going to be another way to cope with the stress. The one that I already mentioned, um, just social interaction. Uh, it seems like people and animals, they are just responding to a stressful situation with social affiliation, which means like they are just trying to be friends with just uh, different people out there, just try to share their concerns and get some support from them. So this way they can fight with the stressful situation. Again, don't hold your problems for yourself all the time. Seek for help. Another point, which is very interesting, and I noticed that like two years ago, it is like nurturing behavior toward offspring. It seems like whenever you are just trying to just have a child or have a family, it's gonna be some sort of biological behavior for protecting yourself like against a stressful situation in life, you feel like if you would have kids or family, you gonna have more happiness in your life, which is true actually. Cause like whenever you are having kids, um, you gonna release a lot of oxytocin hormone. So, um, and this hormone can just help you a lot with a stressful situation. Um, and it is actually a way for just be more socially interacted with people, because like, even though you wouldn't have any friends out there, your partner or your children, they can protect you. Like this is a narrative. They might not protect you 100% all the time, but majority of the time. Yes. Actually having family is just very good. Having a good family is just the best. So that's why people, they are just tending to having partner, having relationship, children and all that. Um, I noticed that like two years ago, I do have a very successful friend. Like he is perfect. He's a um, dean at Emory University, one of the departments, very successful. He went to Stanford and all that. And uh, he's like 42 years old. And we were just talking and I was just always looking at him as a very successful person. Um, so we were just talking and 
suddenly like I noticed that he is very upset because he he didn't marry and he really wanted to have children but he couldn't find like a good partner for himself he wasn't that much lucky so when I was listening to him I thought you could have everything but without having family probably you feel like unfulfilled I don't know how to say that so um I wouldn't say like everybody should just get married or something like that or have a partner or something like that um actually I'm coming from a very different uh, perspective um I'm not against that but yeah I'm just saying that at some point everybody is just looking for some coping mechanism at some point and um and this is not because it is not like because life situation it is like because of your biology like you are just programmed to just have some sort of nurturing behavior for your kids caring about your partner and it feels good for you because at the end of the day you're going to protect yourself you're going to have